Hi, I'm Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. So FontLab 7 is my favorite font editor. I love the powerful features, and I'm going to show you how you can use those powerful features to make your own fonts. Hi, Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. So when I was first getting started designing fonts, the asterisk gave me no shortage of grief. Uh, when you, even if you're copying and pasting, then trying to get everything in the right spot, that was just so annoying to me. But now um, with Font Lab 7, I found out how to make a, an asterisk in underneath 20 seconds and sometimes underneath 10 seconds. So let's let's have our timer here. I'm going to give myself a head start and change it to the pencil tool, and let's see how I do. <laughs> okay, ready, set, go. Uh, okay, this is a little bit of a small one. You know, highlight that, contour, simplify, and we're done. Okay, uh, it's a simple one, but uh, in in seven seconds we have some sort of asterisk, and then of course we can go and change that further. Because see, when I change something here, it moves it for everybody else. If I want to make it look like that, and I'll show you how to modify that a little bit more. So that's how we do it. In the rest of the video, we'll see what is going on here and how were we able to do that. Okay, so this sort of thing is possible using the elements of Font Lab. So what you want to do is open up your elements panel here. Now, I already pre-made the elements, so this is one of those things. Well, it took seven seconds, but it took a little bit of time of me moving all the elements around ahead of time. But... Um, I'm going to give you the the uh, this file. So this is a five pronged asterisk because it has the five. You also have six, sevens, and eights. And um, in a part of this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, how to make those if you want to do it yourself. But for those of you that want to just have the file, then I'm going to show you how you can take from one file you can copy and paste that into a different file. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit idea of what's going on here. Is that I have these elements in my elements panel. The main one is this. So if I if I go click V, if I go to V, which is the black arrow, and then I click on the first one, then that shows me that's my first one here. I made that as the primary one, which means that he's unlocked. So you see the, the that this is not locked here. And then I put it in order going clockwise. So, so the reason why I did him is because he, in for this design of the asterisk, and sometimes you can have it going straight on the top uh, when you have five, and sometimes it's it's going to the left or the right. Um, I made it this way because I think that the one on top, when you have the the straight thing on the top uh, that's not diagonal at all, I think it looks a little bit static. I much like it pointing to the write a little bit more. So that that's uh, how I tend to design those. So what we do is we draw, I, I have a sort of crosshairs here to let you know at what part you're going to draw. And watch, if I go, if I continue to move this in, then they should meet at the one point uh, at the middle of the crosshairs. So that, and you make those, those are guidelines. And you just do that by pulling from the the rulers up here. I'm going to delete that. Okay, what else? What else should I tell you about this? I mean, that's basically it. Besides the nitty gritty. Oh, oh. Th and so one thing you can see from this, and I'll have this file available for you, is that this one has no rotation. So this is the rotation here on the elements panel. There's no rotation. But then the next one has 72 degrees, and that's because we took took 360 divided by five gives us 72, so we want to have these in increments of 72. So this is 72, so the next one is minus 72, the next one's going to be minus 144. But instead of going to the next one over, you, you instead just go to positive 144, and then positive 72. And then these numbers here of the X and Y values, those are tweaked uh, a bit 
in order to get exactly the spot in the middle so that it's that way it was in the middle of crosshairs i moved those things around in order to get it to that position um nothing too much else everything is still resized at 100 percent you could potentially make some of the arms of the asterisk you could make those some smaller than others if you were to resize this um, but usually it's just 100 percent before I go any further, I want to show you just some cool things that you can do to get this changed around. Okay, so watch at all the things we can do here. So this is in real time. If we take this and we move it around, then it's going to see, and then I can change this like this. I can adjust, see, and I'm just creating all types of different designs of asterisk. I can make it go the other way. It looks sort of like an aperture like that. I can take this rotation tool, put it in the middle, and then rotate this any which way, then try rotating it back. And you see all the things you can do? You can add extra shapes in here. So say if you want this to be a little bit different, I start from here and then I make it go to the end like that. Actually, I need to do a simplify command because I went a little bit off on there. So let's go to contour, simplify. That's looking sort of yucky. Okay, but you get the idea. And then see, now we have a different shape and now we can rotate that around how we want to. Okay, so let's take that here and then we can get all these things into one point. If you want, you can move these things out. You can move it in. You can, you can push, I'm just moving it up and down and then you can move it all around like that. So see, there's just so many possibilities of what you can do once you just know how to use this or you could also make it like this if you wanted, and just use the curves and then add in the nodes later that you need. See, so, <laughs> so I love this feature with elements. I love these features with elements and fonts because that allows you to do uh, so many things uh, quickly and it's, it really frees up your imagination because now you can just imagine intricate patterns and whatever and just make one and then it just happens. Okay, that is it. In the next video, there's a couple of things that I'm gonna be showing you. One is how you can make these on your own and there are some best practices for if you have one file where you're made an asterisk like this and you wanna bring it to another font, there's some things that you need to do in order to make that work right. So we're gonna be talking about that. We're gonna also be looking at how exactly to, to make these, and then some conceptual stuff to understand elements a bit better. What is actually going on with all these things moving around? And that's gonna be in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and see you then.